The word that I wanted to share with you this morning, uh, if you turn with me to, into your Bibles, into Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 17. But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. It's the first part of the verse. I, but I will restore you to health and heal your wounds. Father, we thank you for this word even as we meditate upon it and even as we share and discuss. Lord, I pray that this word would bring about a healing in our lives and Lord, this word would be health to us, health in every facet of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray this prayer. Amen. Amen. The Bible, throughout the Bible, you will notice that the Bible speaks about healing. Uh, and healing, when I say, I don't want to be biased to say it's only physical healing, but spiritual healing, right? And um, when I say s the spiritual healing, it relates to the spirit person. You and me, um, God looks at us beyond the gender. When he created us in his image, he only created us in the image of him, which is the spirit itself, right? So he doesn't look, he looks beyond the gender, and he created us man and woman for a specific role and responsibility that we play in this world. But the man and woman were in his image. And the image of God is the spirit of God. And God cares that not only our physical being in this world prospers, but our spirit also prospers. Equally important, right? But the spirit, you also know that we're made of a soul man and a spirit man. And when we look at the soul and spirit man, at the bottom of it, it's emotions, right? It's, it's the emotions that are built up with it. So he, if I have to categorically say he cares about our emotional health, he also cares about our physical health. Modern research and science would say that even in the, in the higher level of medical sciences, they say that a lot of physical uh, manifestations of sickness or disease or anything is related to some, relate in some way to an emotional thing. When the emotions are keeping high and you go through a sickness or disease, you would also see that people who are emotionally well and are cheerful would come out of that sickness very soon or be completely healed out of that sickness too. There is a connection. That's how God wired us to be. So that clearly shows that when we speak about healing, I cannot be biased or discredit the fact that even as physical beings we live in this world, that it's only for the physical being. Throughout the Bible, you would see that there are continually from Genesis all the way into Revelations, there's references of healing. And the healing is limited not only, it, it, it's a, the word is spread across the physical and emotional levels, right? So that's the reason why I want to preface this, this uh, word that I wanted to share with you or this thought that I want to leave with you so that you could ponder upon it. It will be an intuition within you as God reveals more and more. Because I only have about 15 minutes or 20 minutes I have to share something that lays upon me and it's limited to the perceptions and understandings that I have, the experiences that I have. But God wants to make it contextually relevant to you in your life what that word needs to mean with you. I am not, I, you cannot be in my circumstance and situation because God ordained it that way for me and I cannot be in your situation and circumstance because God did not ordain that way. We all go through life experiences according to the plan that he has uniquely created for each one of us. Amen? So this word that brings out to you will bring about, I'm going to share with you some things that what God prepares for us, God has planned for us from a healing perspective to take care of us both physical and emotional levels. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 23 and verse 25. So today what I wanted to make sure is that I don't want to, share what I think about it or what I feel about it. I want to give you a few scriptural references in the time that we have and God will minister to you believing that God will minister to you in your context, in your situation, what's relevant through those scriptures. Amen? Amen. The best thing that I can do is leave the scripture with you because that is word. That is life. The Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth and life and he is also the word. We speak of the word, we believe the word, we receive the word into our lives, we are saved by that word, we live by that word, we are cleansed by that word and I want to leave that word with you so that the word would perfect and do what needs to happen in your life rather than what I think or feel. 
in Exodus chapter 23 and verse 25 it says, worship the Lord your God and his blessings will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness away from the midst of you. I will take away sickness from among you. Worship here is not limited to just the time. You all know that, right? Worship is a lifestyle. Every day we serve the Lord. And every moment we need to serve the Lord. And the Bible says, as you continue to serve the Lord, as we continue to serve the Lord, his blessings will be upon us continually. Basic things, food and water, we will not lack. He says, I will take care because you serve me. You serve me every day. Not just in the church, not, not just in a time where you have to go and minister. You serve me every day as you serve your children, as you serve your spouses, your husbands and wives, as you serve your family, as you serve your friends, as you serve your colleagues and co-workers, as you serve the people who have come into the realm of your life. As you serve, he says, I watch over the service that you do and the position that I have put you into. The, meaning to say it's not up or down or higher down a hierarchical position the role that you play in the life and as you continue to have a service mind and a service heart he says I will take care of even the food and water the basic things I'm so mindful of it because you serve me and I will take away sickness from among you you see that he does not separate healing here he says I want you to be healthy so does that mean that unhealthiness would be allowed into our lives it could be for various reasons. Many variables can play why we could become unhealthy or go into sickness or disease or, or go through pain because of many variables. But the promise here is that no matter what those variables are, what could be the cost that resulted in that sickness or disease, he says, I will heal you and I will bring you out. That is the most important thing. We have to get back to health. And we have to be healthy, right? And God has a great concern for us. And that is why he says, I will take away sickness because there will be sickness among us, but we will not be left with it. He says, I will take it away from you. Be it emotional sickness or physical sickness, right? Sometimes physical sickness we can diagnose and we can, manif we can see the manifestations. Emotional sickness over a period of times you can diagnose. Depressions. You can go through um, uh, an addiction. Sometimes it's not even known to people where a doctor cannot even diagnose, a psychiatrist or a psychologist cannot even diagnose, diagnose this. Sometimes we don't even know we have this until something manifests in certain point in time. But God says, I will even drive out that sickness. Amen? Amen. Sometimes because we can't even, if it's, a, if it's a pill that we need to take, it's a lot more easier to take it. On the emotional side, it's a lot more tougher to take it because the pain is the same. But God says, you know, I look through that too. And I can take away that too. Amen? Amen. That is the God that you and I serve. In Psalms 30 and verse 2, the psalmist or the author of this psalm declares saying, it's a testimony, he says, Lord my God, I call to you for help and you healed me. He says, I only call to you for help. Sometimes, right, you know, later as, I, as I'm getting older in life, I'm realizing that the prayers that Jesus made are very simple. His actions spoke more than words. And I'll tell you, I was even reminded of a verse in the Bible where he says, the men and women catch the women um, in adultery. But actually the man was also in adultery, right? They only brought the women out. It's a biased community, right? And uh, they're all ready to stone. But it's the same men who went into her. Which man was brought in? But you know, the interesting thing is, I don't say God condemned her or condemned the men there. All that he was ready to say is go and sin no more. He made it as simple as that. Sometimes God expects the same amount of simplicity with us. When we go to him and say, it's like this psalmist says, I call to you for help and you healed me. As simple as it, he goes to the little girl who is dead and he speaks into her ears. In Hebrew he says, on, I think it's Aramaic, Talita Kumi, little girl rice. That is the call that he makes. And that prayer wakes up that child. Sometimes we don't have to go. We wonder, do I make to have to make that flowery word of prayer? And the reason I say this is because there was a period in life when I used to quote the word of God and pray. And it is very good to quote the word of God. Very good to quote the word of God. 
And I would authoritatively say that you have to do this because you said this. One day God reminded me, don't remind me of myself. He said, I am the word. You're reminding me of my word. You remind yourself of the word. The word that I gave you is me given to you so that you would know who I am. And he told me, your prayer can be simple. All I'm asking you is not to, mem you, you, it's good that you memorize my word. It's good that you know my word. Your prayer needs to be, make it simple and ask. He's an infinite God, omnipotent, knows everything, omniscient. He's omnipresent everywhere he's present. He says, make it simple. I love the way this, uh, this author of the psalm, I do not know if it's David who wrote this or some other psalmist who wrote this. The simple as it, he testifies, I called to you for help and you healed me. When we have a need for healing in our lives, again, be it physical or emotional, all we need to do is call him and tell him, Lord, I need a healing. I'm struggling. There is a problem. I have pain. I have distress. When we state it, it's better to state it to him than anybody else. More often, we seek to share with our own fellow beings. More often. There are times when we have even forgotten or displaced God to say, I should have shared with God first before anybody else. And there are times I don't even need to share with anybody else, but only to God. Because this situation, nobody can change. And I would think, one could think, not I, but one could think that somebody else can change the situation. But who makes that person change the situation? God himself makes that person change that situation. If that person has to be the channel through which God needs to operate to change. So the best is to make it simple and go before God and make a prayer. And when we break that prayer, I'm sure we will be in the same position to testify as this psalmist has written, Lord my God, I call to you for help and you healed me. The Bible speaks continually and I don't want to leave out the physical side too. We're physical beings. We live in this world. There's a day we were birthed into this world unto the point of death and we go back. And the death could also result from a disease or a sickness. Who am I to say no to it if God has ordained it? And I'm not saying that we, sh we live healthy and die. But I don't control it. It's in the plan of God. No matter what the plan is, right, to go through a suffering and pass away from this life, the point that we need to do is, have we been faithful in what situation and circumstance that have been allowed into our lives? Have we been in the center of his will to fulfill, even through that suffering or pain, that when we pass away, when we pass away, hypothetically I'm saying I pass away, say somebody passes away, could pass away in a hot arrest, and they go through that strain, but until that point in time, the spirit returns back to God. Have we been faithful to him? Are we fulfilling what? I think that's what God looks at. How we were birthed and how we pass away is not so important as what we do for him in that moment of our birth coming in, from that moment of our birth coming into this world and the time that we go back to God. Amen? Amen. And that's the reason why I say that, you know, we sometimes, you know, um, and this is just my learning that we accept no matter what it is. We accept it. If there's an ailment or sickness, we accept it, but we believe, continue to believe during that period of sickness and pain that God is able to heal us and restore us. And throughout the Bible, you would see that of references that when we believe and we continue to keep that hope and that hope burns up and becomes so solidified as a faith and faith does not have to be big because the Bible says, you just believe, Lord, today I believe you can heal. You can restore me. You can revive me. You can re re renew me. You can refresh my life and make it new. You can give life into the areas where it seems dead. You could bring about a warmth where it seems cold and you think that there's no way this can catch fire because even a spark, it'll just blow it out because it's so cold. God can bring that spark because that is why he is life. He is the way to that life. He is the truth, which is the life. And he will be the life that we have received in our lives. And he will spark those areas. He'll rejuvenate those areas. He'll give life into those areas. He will renew those areas. There are times that we see something and we wonder, I can see it, but I don't know if I'd be able to get it. God says, I will take you there. And he's able to heal our minds that is not able to fathom the things that he has kept for us. 
because our mind becomes our own block and not able to see what God has kept for us. Not able to believe and trust in him saying, I don't even have to see it, Lord. I just want to trust it. Because if I can see it in my physical, spiritual mind, I can see beyond and know that you're in control. And all I need is that state of mind where I can see, know that you're in control. And that healing only God can bring about in our lives. Continually mentoring and disciplining us to make sure that you know, we can think that way. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14 and 15, We've read this verse many times over. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. And a land is made up of people, of individuals, of families, of community. You want a healing in your community. You want a healing in your family. You want a healing in your marriage. You want a healing in your parenthood or your childhood. You want a he healing in, your, in the community where you work. Um, you, you want a healing in the community where you live in. God says, I will bring about a healing. And a lot of this healing, not only it's a physical healing, it's also the emotional healings that come about uh, that, that we need. And as, as we come through life, God only can bring that healing. And he says, I am able to heal because the Bible says that, you know, he listens to our prayers. When we call upon him, he says these four things. You pray and seek my face. Turn from wicked ways and hear from, and I will hear from heaven. I will even forgive the sins. When we pray, he forgives us. When we ask for forgiveness, he does not say, I will hold back my forgiveness. Oh no, I'll remember. Or my memory is there, it'll come back. I love the way God looks at it. He's only engraved us in the palm of his hands. He's not engraved our sins. Our sins, once it's wiped away, he doesn't remember. As men and women, we keep that memory. Many a times in life when we go through hardships, we don't remember the good times and, and the faithfulness of friendships and relationships and God, but we remember the bad times, that little thing that happened, and it gnaws us and thaws us. God is not like that. God engraves us, looks at us in a beautiful image that he, which he created us, and he says, I have plans to prosper you. I want to give you a future. I want to give you hope. And that hope built as a faith to move mountains. No matter what it is, God is there to heal and restore us. In Isaiah chapter 38, verse 16 and 17, it says, You restored me to health and let me live. You restored me to health and let me live. Surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. There are times that God puts us through anguish. So don't think that we will not go through problems or struggles or strain or stress in our lives. God says, I will allow it. But through that anguish, through that period, it's only for your benefit. There are times we may have relationships and God would cut that relationship off. And when he cuts that relationship, it deeply, deeply hurts us. At that point in time and season as we go through, we realize, why did this happen? But God says, I know the benefits. This is the good thing for you. And he will do it. But at the same time, that same relationships that we need to have and it is strained because of our egos or whatever the thing might be that has come the path that destroy that relationship. And the enemy has played havoc in that place because his purpose is very clear. The enemy's purpose is to steal, to destroy, and to finally kill us. And he says, I'll kill you in that relationship. And God says, no, I will restore that relationship. With humility and grace as we submit to him, says, I will restore that relationship. So God knows where to draw the line to move progress or move away in a different direction. No matter whatever that is, God is able to do that for us. In Isaiah chapter 57, verse 18 and 19, he says, I have seen their ways, but I will heal them. I will guide them and restore comfort to Israel's mourners, creating praise on their lips. lips. Peace, peace to those far and near, says the Lord. I will heal them. He says, peace. Many a times when we go through emotional sickness, we lose rest, we lose peace, we lose joy. At that point in time, you would think, you know, I had thought this way, I wish I had a headache because I can take a couple of Tylenol and I could be done with. That emotional sickness does not even when we lay in our bed, and I do not, I'm, I'm sure most of you will agree with me, that we can't even sleep. Sometimes we'll be thinking we're sleeping, but our soul is such, such an unrest. At that point in time, we say, Lord, can I not see peace in my life? A peace of consistency. And God says, no matter what the situation is, 
My peace is about that situation. You may be going through it, but there is a peace that I will settle down upon your heart that passeth all understanding. The understanding may say, if I get out of the situation, then I will have peace. He's, he's saying, I'm beyond that. My peace is beyond that situation and circumstance, beyond the understanding that you have of what peace is, my peace is beyond that. That is the God that you and I serve. And he does not want to leave us without understanding it. But he will bring that understanding. Maybe we may not be in a position or a period in our lives ready to understand it. But God says, I'm mindful of it. And I want to bring that peace into your life. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse, uh, ch chapter 4, verse 20 and 22, it says, My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them. They are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. But emotionally, when we are healthy, our body also responds in a healthy way. Stress and strain, sometimes, have you realized, it can cause pain in your body? You ask people, they'll say, like, you know, I can even feel the, like, shooting pains in my bones. That's exactly what it is. God says, I will give you a complete healing for your whole body. Mind, body, and spirit. That is the God who loves us and cares for us. He says in Proverbs chapter 17 and 22, A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit even dries up the bones dries up the bones God says I won't leave you in a manner when you your spirit has been crushed and destroyed it could be crushed by somebody else through a relationship it could be a problem that you're going through and you don't know a solution you don't know a way out and you're being crushed and he says but I will bring a cheer the Bible clearly says the joy of the Lord is my strength the joy of the Lord becomes our strength when we go through that emotional struggle and strain and stress and strife, we need strength. And God says, I will cheer you up and give you strength. My joy will be your strength. And he says, come into my presence, come closer to me. He says, the Bible says, in my presence, you will find fullness of joy. The Bible says, in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. And what is that joy? The joy of the Lord is my strength. He says, I know how to cheer you up even through that situation. You make the time and you come to me because I'm waiting. All you need is I'm waiting for you to come. I'm waiting for you to come. But can you make the time to come? And I will cheer you up during that time. I will encourage you. I will comfort you. I will, I will give you counsel and guidance on what you need to do. I will give you cheer and I will make you joyful when you go out of my presence that you have that kind of an incredible strength to be able to face anything and walk through it. That is the God that you and I serve. Finally, in closing, I want to leave this word with you. The Bible says in Mark chapter 5 and verse 34, He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Go in peace and freed from your suffering. I want, to, want you to know that today, even as you go home, some of you, even in your homes, in your bedrooms, or in your rooms where you're sitting down, and you're listening to this word, or you're getting ready to work, getting ready for something else, and you're listening to this, even as you're doing this, your faith will make you heal you. Your faith will heal you. Your faith over your sons and daughters and your wives and your husbands will heal. Your faith over a situation at work and, and, and your children's lives will make that situation heal. Today, God wants to remind us, and if we can carry these words of promises, that even as you go out, as you have started to hear this word, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And as you hear this word, there is a faith that is being churned within you. And you'd wonder how big that faith is. You don't have to worry about it. All you need to know is, I believe you can do it, Lord. That is the simplest thing, as simple as it. That's why he says, as small as a mustard seed. As small as a mustard seed. And that small as a mustard seed, what it says is it's not a complex faith. I want you to understand my child. What I'm expecting from you is simplicity. Just simply believe. When you're listening to this word, that healing has started in your life. It started in your life. And the Bible also clearly says, and the author of Ecclesiastes right, there is a season and a time for everything for the purpose of God. Sometimes it may be delayed. But trust me, it may be delayed. At the appointed time, it will swiftly go through. It will speedily go through and fulfill. That is the God that you and I serve. 
Can we stand together and I want to